Thanks for watching, folks, for going around America. We stopped this time in Tennessee, where we find Sandor Katz. He is a fermentation revivalist. Did I get that right, Sandor? You got it right. Thank you. All right, let's start there. What exactly is a fermentation revivalist? Well, let's see. I started getting um, um, interested and then obsessed with all things fermented beginning around 25 years ago. Um, and um, uh, I mean, the first time I taught a workshop on fermentation, which was in 1998, uh, I realized that, you know, for many people, there's nothing scarier than the idea of intentionally growing bacteria on food. And people projected all of the anxiety that they'd been taught to have on bacteria, uh, about bacteria onto the idea of fermenting foods. How do I know I'm going to have good bacteria growing and not dangerous bacteria that might kill me? Um, and so I realized that, you know, as, as, um, um, as, as, as essential and integral as fermented foods and beverages are to the way people everywhere eat and drink, um, um, you know, like all aspects of food products, uh, uh, they've been disappearing from the fabric of people's lives and um, disappearing behind, you know, to, into factories. And so people were able to project all of this sort of mystery and um, fear onto it. So um, I just got interested in the in the project of um, demystifying fermentation right. and how how easy it is. If you could explain then for our uh, viewers. What is the foundation for fermentation fervor? <laughs> well, the, um, I, I teach fermentation workshops, and um, um, you know that's what that's what I call um, you know my my little fermentation school uh, uh, here in rural Middle Tennessee. Um, I have a website which is wildfermentation.com. I actually teach workshops all over. I'll be teaching in uh, uh, Lawrence and uh, Kansas City uh, at the end of February and beginning of March. Um, but on my website, which is wildfermentation.com, um, I post all the all the workshops, so you can find out. Okay, so now at your workshops, what are the type of people who go to these, and what are they looking for? Um, I mean, all kinds of different people. I mean, who are pe people become interested in fermentation for lots of different reasons. I mean, certainly I get chefs and people who are interested primarily in flavor. I get people who are interested primarily in um, uh, uh, potential health benefits. Um, I get farmers who are interested in practical methods for uh, uh, preserving food. Um, so, you know, people get interested in the phenomenon of fermentation from all kinds of different uh, uh, standpoints. Okay, let me ask you this before I forget, we get too far along. People watching want to find out more about you and your workshops. Where can they go? Um, my, my website, wildfermentation.com, is uh, uh, where I have all of that, uh, uh, along with all kinds of uh, uh, interesting fermentation-related uh, resources. How did you get into fermentation, if that's a reasonable question? Oh, it's certainly a reasonable question. Well, um, you know, like many people, I grew up eating products of fermentation. My um, uh, my grandparents were immigrants from Eastern Europe, and we always had pickles in the refrigerator. Um, so, and I grew up loving the flavor of pickles. Um, uh, then, when I was in my mid twenties, I spent a couple of years following a macrobiotic diet, and um, one of the things that macrobiotics really emphasizes is the digestive benefit of live fermented foods. And I noticed that these pickles that I'd been eating my whole life, um, uh, when I would eat them, I could literally feel the salivary glands under my tongue squirting out saliva. Um, and so I quite literally began to associate these foods with getting my digestive juices flowing. Um, but it wasn't until I moved uh, uh, from uh, New York City, where I grew up, to rural Tennessee, where I've lived for the last 25 years, um, and started gardening that I realized the practical aspect of fermentation uh, uh, in terms of food preservation. And uh, that's what led me to investigate how to make sauerkraut um, and that um, then, then like developed into making country wines, making yogurt, um, I learned how to make miso, beer brewing, and um, just explored many different um, uh, uh, realms of fermentation. Sandor Katz, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Okay, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Talking fermentation in Tennessee, I'm Vic McCarty for Newsnet.